الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد يا أيها الذين آمنوا ادخلوا في السلم كافة ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected Ulamai Kiram, beloved brothers and elders We have been discussing those a'mal that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had mentioned in the hadith and made dua for those people that carry out these a'mal We are so fortunate that centuries after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has left this dunya those a'mal are still present and we can get the du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you look at the ahadiths, we find that they are very diverse. They're not restricted to one aspect of our deen. Salat, or mu'amlat, or akhlaq. Different aspects of deen are mentioned and different a'mal are mentioned. And this season that we are going through is a season of rectification and rectitude. Why? Because we are approaching the great month of Ramadan. For which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the ummah to make dua from the month of Rajab. O oh Allah, bless us in Majr, Rajab and Shaban. O oh, Ramadan. Take us forth to Ramadan. And this is the tendency that everything a person loves, everything that is valuable, everything that he cherishes, then he looks forward to it. Whether it is his wedding day, whether it is the day of the Jalsa is approaching, whatever occasion the person cherishes, loves and aspires for, then he looks forward for it and makes preparations. So here Rasulullah has taught us to make preparations for Ramadan. That great, auspicious month, wherein the mercies, unlimited mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the great ni'mats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower, will shower on this ummah. Allahumma balirna Ramadan, Allahumma sallimna li Ramadan, wa sallim in Ramadan and lana, wa sallim hu lana mutakabbala. The excellent duas are mentioned. O oh Allah, save us and protect us for the month of Ramadan. We must be there when Ramadan comes. And save the Ramadan, protect it for us so we can make good use of it. And make it be such that Ramadan of our Ramadan becomes accepted. The amal of Ramadan becomes accepted. As mentioned, because of a person's Ramadan is proper and carried out in the proper obedience of Allah Pak, the barakat of Ramadan is that it will last throughout the entire year. That is why the pious people, every month, every year in Ramadan, they grow from one stage to another stage. Why? Because their piety increases. And that piety, the effect of that piety remains for the next year. Again, when Ramadan comes, they exert themselves. Again, the piety increases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people that value these Mubarak days that are coming. Before Ramadan, 15th of Shaban will come. Also a very auspicious night, night of Ibadat for us. We should be awaiting it, not very far away after a week. Then we have occasions like the Bukhari Shri Khatam that will take place here in this masjid and in another masjid in Overport take place next week. These are great occasions. Imagine the entire Bukhari Sharif, a hadith, thousands of hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the day of the completion comes, as mentioned, the du'as are accepted on that day. So we should concentrate ourselves about great days, great occasions, and take advantage of it. Take advantage of it, and give special emphasis that these are Mubarak occasions. Concentrate our wives, our children, our families, like when the day of Eid comes, and like when a wedding comes, etc. Everybody, everybody is in a different mode or different mood when those days come. Why? Because they're conscious of the importance and significance. So here we should concentrate our family, our friends, our relatives, etc. as to what is coming. Then we also have the Ishtima that is coming next weekend, very, very close. Also a great occasion where people gather from different parts of the world for the self-reformation, for the spreading of deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are occasions, should not let them go by like ordinary days. A person who does not know about it, or ma'az Allah, a person who does not have iman like the kuffar, they do not know the difference of the Ishtima, the difference of a Jalsa, the difference of Ramadan. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed us with iman and we should take special notice of these occasions and take advantage of them. However, we had mentioned two or three hadiths where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentions that may Allah have mercy on that person that is very, <coughs> very easy and very considerate when he buys, when he sells, when he claims and when he has to pay his dues. We also mentioned a hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that person whose earnings are lawful and his spending also is very moderate and he saves for that day when it will be the day of his need, etc. For him also the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are, these are related 
to people buying and selling, etc., and earning a living. Then we find another hadith of Rasulullah Wasallam regarding the eyes. The eyes that Allah Ta'ala has given us, the great ni'mat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We can earn great rewards in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with these eyes. And Rasulullah Wasallam makes dua, that eye, that eye, bakat bin khashyatillah, that cries because of the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that eye, saharat fi sabirillah, that stayed awake in the path of Allah. Rasulullah Wasallam makes special dua for that eye, that cried because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was a t- common trait in the pious people, as Umar radiallahu mentioned, that he used to cry so much that there were two lines here parallel to his eyes. So much he used to cry. And it comes to the hadith, the person that cries because of the fear of Allah, he will not enter Jahannam till the milk does not go back into the teeth of the animal. And that is an impossible thing. When the milk is taken out, the animal is milk, then that milk does not go back into the teeth. In other words, that person will not go into the fire of Jahannam who, care, who cries out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet in another hadith it mentioned that the person that sits alone and he remembers Allah and he cries, cries because of the fear of Allah or because of the fear of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will be given that esteemed position of the shade of the of the shade of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Man zakar Allah khalatan khaliyan fafadat ayna. He remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively and on, on, he doesn't not have any other thoughts in his mind or he sits alive in one corner isolated from people and he remembers Allah and bakat and he cries. And that person will get this great honor of the shade of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our learned Mushayk tell us that where there will be shade, there will be no hisab. And where there will be hisab, there will be no shade. Imagine, such an easy action. But we have to focus the heart towards the greatness of Allah and create the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then cry. In another hadith, you really start to salam and come down and there was a person that was crying. He told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the actions will be weighed. Like we know, soon we'll come to that hadith, subhanallah wa alhamdulillah, subhanallah wa azim very weighty on the scale. All the actions of man will be weighed except this action. That is crying out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or out of the fear of akhirat. This will not be weighed. This will not be weighed. And in view of this, as Jibir islam mentioned, that one tear will be sufficient to extinguish the wildest fire of Jahannam. This is the value of our tears in this dunya. One tear that will come out of that mu'min, out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and after the fear of the akhirat, it will be sufficient to extinguish the wildest fire of Jahannam. One occasion there was an Arab brother that came, he had actually physically calculated how much degrees will be the fire of Jahannam, how hot it will be. Mentioned it will be 70 times more than the fire of this dunya. Then he made an estimation, I don't remember the figures, so much is the fire of Jahannam, fire of the dunya, it gets heated up to a certain extent. Then he multiplied it set by 70, and he said such intense heat, but one tear of a mu'min is sufficient to extinguish this fire. So we should take out time and weep in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be weeping in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take out some time when we sit in isolation and think of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cry in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is another action mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith that may Allah have mercy on that eye that cries in the fear of Allah and that eye that stays awake Fi Sabirillah, in the part of Allah, like we find so and so is on security, that is Fi Sabirillah. The eye is staying awake to look after the goods, the property of the people, this is Fi Sabirillah. Person that goes out in jihad and he stays awake to look after the nation that is making jihad, this is Fi Sabirillah. Person that is looking after some dini property, etc., because of vandalism, etc., of course, of the incidents that are taking place nowadays, that is also Fi Sabirillah. So that eye also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has made dua for that eye. In another reward, we understand that looking after our tongues, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi has made dua for mercy for those people, man hafiz alisanahu, who save God's his tongue, looks after his tongue, does not speak evil, does not hurt the feelings of people, does not speak those things that are impermissible, looks after his tongue. And this is corroborated by many ahadiths, amlik alayka lisanak, that look after your tongue, control your tongue, and do not say anything that will be a means of remorse and regret for you 
tomorrow on the day of judgment. So look, look after the tongue and وَعَرَفَ زَمَانَهُ And he knows the challenges of his time. He's aware of the challenges of his time. And the third part is وَاسْتَقَامَتْ تَرِيقَتُهُ And his manner and his way and his conduct is completely straight, absolutely straight and upright. For that person also, Rasulullah Wasallam has made dua of mercy for that person. So imagine looking after the tongue becomes a means of earning the mercy of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet we do not regard it as a great ibadat. One hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes dua for that tongue that when he speaks the ghanim, when he speaks it benefits, benefits itself or benefits others. And is a sakata, is a sakata, is a samata, the person keeps quiet, then also he's safe. When he keeps quiet, is a samata, salima. O kamaqala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he keeps quiet, and he's safe from everything. So here, controlling the tongue also can draw the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith we find, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you look at the aspect of ibadat, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that that man, or that woman, first part is that woman that gets up for tahajjud salat, and thereafter she wakes up her husband, and her husband does not get up, she takes some water and sprinkles them to him, and vice versa. That man that gets up for tahajjud salat, and he reads his salat and wakes up his wife, and she does not get up, he sprinkles some water on her, and for that person also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, May Allah have mercy upon them. So here the ibadat, the aspect of ibadat comes. It's also an important and integral part of our deen. Another hadith as far as ibadat is concerned, we find the explicit dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, May Allah have mercy on that person, Salla arba'an qabla al-asr. Who reads four rakat salat before asr. And this four rakat salat is sunnati ghayr mu'akkira. It's not emphasized. If a person leaves it out, there's no sin. And look at the special emphasis of the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu upon this person. That whoever reads it, then may Allah have mercy on that person. Some people have written that this will be a means of his khatima with iman. That he will pass away with iman. So we should try and endeavor to read these four rakats before asr salat. Though it's not, it's not sunnati mu'akkira, it's not <coughs> emphasized sunnah. You leave it out, there's no sin. But with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we should ensure that we read it. Read it regularly and try and come early. Allah Ta'ala give me and all of us to think to carry this out. Similarly, we find Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one hadith directs us towards the upbringing and nurturing of our child on deen. Also a very great ibadat. Also a very great rank for that child who is a pious person. Man fi ibadatillah. He is growing up in the ibadat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala saves himself from all those challenges that are around today. And we know what they are. Saves himself. Punctual with his ibadat. Punctual with the rights of the people. is punctual with the rights of his parents. And he carries out the deen like he is taught by the ulama kiram. And he is pious. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on that father who assists his son upon piety. That father that assists his son upon piety. Always worried about him concerned about him. And mashallah, Allah Ta'ala, when he gives to fiqh, he got one person here in Johannesburg, he migrated from America because of the deen of his children. And he built a house here, etc. And today, alhamdulillah, both his children are ulama kiram. And the one or two daughters are alima. Why? He sacrificed the dunya to come here for deen. And mashallah, they are settled and doing the work of deen. So that person that assists his child upon his piety and righteousness, for him also, it's the du'a of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's a great need for that, especially in these days and times. Why? Because we provide for our children. We look after our children as far as their safety and security is concerned. But when it comes to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find a great amount of laxity. Child is not reading salat. Child is not dressing up properly. The child is not sure if he's consuming halal or haram. We don't know where the child is going. We should have links and association with our children. We should not, they should not be cut away with us with all those modern gadgets that come between us and them. One brother had said from this member so nicely, an Arabian brother, he said, the children are ours, but their hearts belong to the kuffar. Their hearts belong to the kuffar. They are so much influenced by their lifestyle that their hearts are inclined towards their life. Hearts should be inclined towards the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu And for this, we need to make a concerted effort in our homes. One is to tell the child, do this. And one is a concerted effort in the homes of ta'aleem, of tirat, of zikr, whatever mahol and atmosphere and environment you create in the homes, 
the child will get influence. There's a small girl about two years old in the family. When the azan goes, she says, azan, namaz, azan, namaz. Why? That is the effect. When somebody hears the azan, what do they do? They read namaz. The two-year-old girl is conscientizing people around them, azan, namaz, azan, namaz. Why? Because this is the environment they stay in. We should be so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some places overseas, the azan is not even heard. You can't even stay there for a few days. Why? You don't hear the azan. We're so used to hearing the azan. No azan is allowed there. Here, mashallah, five times a day we hear the azan. And the women folk in the homes can establish salat. They go towards salat. So the environment is created. Once an environment is created, and we conscientize our children about dini obligations, inshallah, they'll go that path. But if you are lax, and another thing is, we have to be role models. We can tell the child ten times, but if we ourselves establish the salat, this will have a profound effect on the hearts and minds of the children. But this is so important that my father, my mother, my granny, they are all establishing salat. So I ought to establish salat as well. So this is something is not only left for the tabligh jamaat or the ulamas. No, every single parent should be concerned. Like we had a duty towards our children as far as their physical welfare is concerned, the financial welfare is concerned, we have a greater duty towards them as far as the deen is concerned. And, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ku anfasakum wa ahalikum nara. Allah Ta'ala spells this out explicitly in the Quran. Oh, you believe, save yourself and save your families from the fire of Jahannam. So this is a duty. One hadith is mentioned that there are three basic duties of every child. Haqqul waladi alal walid, ayyuh hassana ismahum. That he gives him a good name. Wa yuallamuhu al-kitab. And he teaches him the Quran in part. Or teaches him religious education. Wa yuzawwiju idha balag. And when he matures, he reaches the age of puberty, then he must get him settled. These are basic rights of every parent or children to not fulfill the excuses, delay this also. Because each one of them is so important. He has a good name, mashallah, I feel so nice. And the name should be what? Names of the Anbiya, alayhi salatu wasalam, of the Sahaba Ikram, Ridwanullah, alayhi ajma'in. And we should give this name with a good omen. Oh Allah, make my son like Umar, anhu. make my son like Abu Bakr, make my son like Anas, anhu. and the rest of the Sahaba Ikram, who oh, make my son like this respective Anbiya, alayhi salatu wasalam. Today there are tendencies of such names that first of all, I never heard of those names. Such names that we have heard of, and such names that you can't even pronounce. And in such names, we don't know where it came from. Always reminds me of that one alim, who that person phoned him two o'clock in the morning, in his excitement. He said, Mohana, my wife has given birth to a son. Two o'clock in the morning, the person gets a phone call, either means somebody passed away, or there's a hijacking, or there's a robbery, something. So the respected Monisab got up, and said, Alhamdulillah, at least some good news. So he gave it to me in his excitement, at two o'clock in the morning, this is the news. Then he posed such a question to him, such a question he posed to him, that Mona, give me such a name that nobody has. At two o'clock in the morning, to, to stretch that person's brain to such an extent. So Mona told him, simply name him Shaitan. Because nobody has named this child Shaitan. Otherwise, this is just the time to ask me for it. If you want to ask me, you can ask me, but not this time, two o'clock in the morning, what must I name my child? There's so many good names of the Ambiya Rishadu Salaam in Quran and Pak. So many names of the respected Sahaba Ikram, Ridwanullah, Alim Ajma'in, should name that people. Some people, like Mufti Zainul Abidin, Rahmatullahi, he had so much following and love for Mona Yusuf Sahib, Rahmatullahi, who was the son of Mona Ilyas, Rahmatullahi, that he has a number of friends with the same name. Yusuf, Yusuf number one, Yusuf number two, Yusuf number three, Yusuf number four. There's one graveyard, my son was telling me, up to seven generations, I think, the name is Muhammad. Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad. And if you see, if you look at our generation or the generation before us, there are so many names that are common. Our family also, Ismail is common. Zulekha is common. Amina is common. Every brother has his children. Uh, Amina, Zulekha, why? These are good names. We can't say that they also got this name. We must get such a name that is not present anyway. You have something of the dunya that's good. A masir is bad that you like. You won't say that so-and-so got one. I shouldn't buy one. Why? We go and buy for those things that are good and better. And Rasulullah s.a.w. mentioned the hadith, Abdullah, Abdurrahman, good names, and Muhammad, good names. So, when we get children, so nice when you hear a child, what's your child's name? Man says, Anas, or he says, Huzaifa, radiallahu anhu. Names of Sahaba Ikram, Idwanullah, and Ali Ajma'in. So Allah Ta'ala gave us to fiqh, the first right, the second right, to teach them the Quran. Teach them the Quran, beginning from downstairs, from Alif Ba'ta, right up to take them to the ulama level, Alhamdulillah, Niamat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recently we had a friend that passed away 
And the pastor is mentioned suddenly. Three of them are ulama al-kiram. But this is the legacy that we need. Not the wealth that is there. The wealth will disappear. Nobody will know what I owned and what you owned after a few years. But these children will be there to carry out the deen, inshallah, to the four corners of the globe. And whatever actions they carry out, that will, be, will come and come to our account. So we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this season and in this mosam when Ramadan is so close, Ramadan is so near. All may have some faults, etc. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's repentance is waiting for us. Mercy is waiting for us. So this was one action looking after the tongue that the person looks after that is safeguarded and he gets the du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He looks after his children. In one hadith he mentioned, مَنْ عَلَّقَ سَوْتًا بَيْنَ أَهْلِهِ لِإِسْلَاحِهِ a person that has the whoop hanging, the whoop hanging there in the house to, for the reformation of his family, him also may Allah have mercy. Otherwise, he reprimands his children when they do evil work. When they do wrong, he reprimands them, he rebukes them. doesn't just leave them to carry on and do what they want to. No concern. That's what the same reward is mentioned when a person mentions to his wife, he mentions all the religious obligations to his wife. That your sadaqa, your zakat, your neighbor, etc. mentions all this. Then may Allah have mercy on that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unite his family with him in paradise and in Jannah. So we have obligations for our wife and children and we have his duties on one hand, the du'as of Rasulullah says on one hand, Mona Esan al Haq that come here. He once very beautifully mentioned, says our deen is so beautiful that for one action you get multiple rewards. One action, multiple rewards. You get the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're making amal in the Quranic verse, etc. The children will make dua for you, will get the reward for that, etc. Isa is sawab for you when you are gone. One action. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us tawfiq. That the actions of deen, actions are very simple and small, but the reward is enormous. And sometimes the effort is also very little. Effort is very little, but the reward is tremendous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to take the du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and carry out these respected actions that have been carried, that have been mentioned in the ahadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq.